Hi everyone, Tanya Hertz here. We are just going to talk a little bit more today about leaders, uh, leadership. We're talking about uh, power, influence, using our, our power and influencing others in organizations. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And we are just at the type five types of, of power. And <coughs> five primary types of, of power can be divided into two subdivisions, organizational power and personal power. So does the power derive from the position in the organization? So organizational power is often called positional power. Personal power is regardless of the company that we're in. This is the power that we take with us uh, based on ourselves, our own knowledge, skills, abilities, uh, education, experience, uh, personality, et cetera, et cetera. All right. There's actually a, there's actually a, a sixth type of power in that taxonomy of, of power. And um, so of the five we we talked about the expert referent legitimate reward and coercive the sixth type of power is actually called informational power and uh, informational power is is power that you have until you use it so it's essentially the power of the secret right power of, of knowing something that other people don't know but then by very definition of of that type of power as soon as you use it it's no longer uh, a type of power uh, because the secret is no longer a secret, right? It's no longer a secret. All right. So there are, um, this is the, 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 the paradigm of uh, leadership and um, the, the, effective, the effectiveness of leadership. It's, it's typically attributed, as we know, to the leader much more than than it is to the other um, elements of this of this paradigm or framework. And <clears throat> that's um, perhaps unfairly so. Uh, if, if you look at this figure, uh, it shows that that there are three three separate um, three separate sections, the leader, the followers, and the situation. and uh, there's it's not by accident th that those are all three the same size. Um, they all contribute to uh, to power. They all have a function of, of power. And so if you look at the figure, it shows that expert power is primarily a function of the leader and legitimate power is largely a function of the situation. And then the remaining three types of power have, have joint functions. Um, Let's look at each of the types of power in more detail, and, and I think it'll make more sense starting it with expert power. So expert power is the power of knowledge, of being an expert. And this is a type of personal power. And this is, this is the, the power that's derived from having expertise in a particular industry, in a particular area. And it's largely a function of the amount of knowledge that a person possesses relative to others in the group. Um, so we can have um, we can have a lot of expert power in an organization just because or if the uh, there are others in the organization who know very little about the subject. Um, and then conversely, we can have very little power if we're in an organization where um, people are highly knowledgeable ab about a particular area. And um, this, is a, this is one type of power where a leader can lose their legitimacy. They can lose their, their ability to influence um, other people if the followers have more expert power than the leader. And this happens when you get a new leader in an organization or somebody who's highly trained in organizational behavior or management, but maybe doesn't have as much of that technical expertise or technical knowledge. Uh, you, you can see they have a very difficult time influencing and controlling others when they have low expert power. Uh, 
So referent power, that's the power that, that we get when, um, or the potential power that we have when um, we are famous, right? This is celebrity power. This is, this is, this is a power where people want to be around you. They want to be seen with you. They want to, they want to, um, to know you. They, they, they like you, right? Um, this is a, this is a, a, again, a type of personal power and, um, this is a relationship power and, um, it, it can be a very effective type of power and, but we have to be very careful with, uh, with referent power because you can get yourself into trouble. Uh, referent power is the power of people liking you, but, uh, you have to be careful of it because if, if the power that you're driving is from the fact that people like you, uh, oftentimes leaders will, will go out of their way to ensure that they're liked and that they, hang on to their referent power when they should, uh, they shouldn't, right? They shouldn't. So you have to be really careful. Um, leaders, you know, they can not use other types of power when they really should be using other types of power because they want to maintain that referent power. So um, example might be if a leader might not want to discipline a follower because they have a good relationship and they don't want to lose that referent power. and uh, so, so it's, it's, it is an effective type of power, but you do need to be careful. Uh, just be cognizant of that that could happen. And also know that leaders are, are likely to use this referent power during times of calm when, uh, you know, when stakes aren't very high, when there's plenty of time to act, when, when things are, are moving along nicely uh, in times of crisis, referent power is not as um, widely used or, or effective. So legitimate power is a type of power. Um, this is also called position power. This is also called um, uh, organization power. And, and legitimate power is the power that we get from our title, from our role within the organization. This is um, formal authority, official authority. And um, this is often goes hand in hand with the ability to offer rewards or punishment. And legitimate power is, um, this is the type of power that <laughs> it is, it, it's great in, in, in times of crisis, when we need to act fast, we don't have time to rely on other methods. Um, this is a, this is the, 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 the power that you get because of your title in an organization, essentially. Reward power, uh, that's, again, it's intrinsically linked to uh, legitimate power or position power. And reward power is the power that we get by being able to reward our subordinates. Um, the, some dangers of, of overusing reward power is um, that your subordinates can often uh, end up feeling like they've been used or like they, um, like you're trying to sort of trick them, right? This is the, uh, this is the, the carrot in the carrot and stick analogy that you often hear of power. Um, so we know that when you're using reward power, especially when you're offering en extrinsic rewards, um, it's not as effective as using um, intrinsic rewards. So and extrinsic rewards are uh, money, praise, um, things, right? Things outside of, uh, of that person. Opla. Where intrinsic is, um, intrinsic would be uh, rewards that are, that are inside of, um, of the uh, individual. And these can be, um, these can be, more effective in influencing and having uh, lasting behavioral changes. All right. So we know that leaders can um, enhance their ability to influence others by um, 
by looking at uh, what types of what types of rewards are most desired by people in the organization and we can look at you know we look a lot at the we look at a lot at the aggregate right we look at what motivates people what um what makes people uh, either satisfied or dissatisfied at, at work, and and we know in the aggregate some things that are effective, and and um, we have to be careful of this. <laughs> we have to be careful because uh, that's in the aggregate, and that's um, you know based on research, and and it's great for giving us a starting point. But we have to remember that each person is different. So a good example of this would be something like praise, right? We know that most people like being praised, but there are employees who absolutely loathe it. They can't stand being praised. They feel embarrassed when they are uh, called out on and or singled out. And so it's important that, um, it's important that we find out what truly motivates our employees. Um, when we are considering using reward power. And um, it's also important to, re re to realize that overemphasis on rewards can instill a sort of contractual or, or economic feeling relationship between uh, subordinates and leaders. And so um, if you are using rewards, make sure to, to combine uh, intangible and um, tangible rewards, extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. And, and reward power is not just solely directional. Followers can also exercise reward power over their leaders by um, controlling some scarce, controlling scarce resources, modifying uh, their level of effort based on how well the leader's um, performing. And I don't know if any of you have ever, well, think of the last time that you went to the DMV. Think about the, 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 the person behind the counter at the DMV. They had a little bit of power to, uh, to, to reward you. And boy, they, they wield that power. They, they wield it like, like nothing I've ever seen, right? All right, moving on. Coercive power. Now, coercive power is, is a much more hard tactic hard tactic uh, you know some some companies uh, they use reward power uh, by giving money or or prizes and uh, other companies they will try to control their or influence uh, followers by um, coercive power leadership through fear right tyrannical leadership um, this is a, this is, this is a basically punishing our employees and there are uh, some drawbacks. It, this is effective. I mean, it can be really effective if it's used judiciously infrequently and um, just in very limited and specific situations. Uh, if you rely on this too much, it can absolutely destroy your, your leadership destroy your organization. Um, if you, I don't know if any of you have ever worked for, for somebody who uses a lot of coercive power. Um, one of the most common forms of coercion is when a superior has these temperamental outbursts. And um, I, this can have such negative effects on an organization when you have a, a superior blowing up. Uh, it's a hard tactic. It's it can be effective, but it leads to feelings of um, dissatisfaction. All right. So leaders can usually exert more power during a crisis than during periods of calm. Have you heard that saying? Right. Uh, don't ever let a good uh, crisis go to waste. And again. During a crisis, followers are, are typically much more eager to um, 
to change their behavior, to receive direction, to receive um, control from leaders. And um, so uh, ethical, ethical leaders are, are, again, judicious about using power in a crisis situation uh, carefully and not uh, in a self-serving manner. Well, there's, there's a lot that we can say about that, but um, moving on. So research indicates that reliance on referent and expert power led to employees who typically were more motivated, tend to be uh, higher levels of satisfaction. They, they have uh, less withdrawal behaviors, including absenteeism. They have better performance, uh, better, uh, and the performance particularly uh, when it comes to their uh, task performance and their citizenship behaviors, all improved. And those are um, some of the softer tactics, right? All right. Four generalizations can be made about power and influence. Number one, effective leaders typically take advantage of all sources of power. And leaders in well-functioning organizations are open to being influenced by their subordinates and not just the other way around. And leaders vary in the extent to which they share power with their subordinates, but good leaders share power. And effective leaders generally work to increase their power basis or become more willing to use their course of power. Now, people will vary in their motivation to want to actually use that power. Uh, and we typically see the need for power expressed in two ways. Either personalized power uh, is exercised for personal needs by, um, you, you see people who, who want to use power for, for purely self-centered, uh, impulsive, uh, demanding means. Uh, whereas socialized power is used for the benefit, benefit of others um, or for the benefit of the organization and often involves self-sacrifice. And the thematic, uh, uh, well, actually, I, I don't know if I'm going to, I might, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll give you access or, or I'll let you do this. Look up the thematic um, apperception test. So this is a projective personality test that assesses the need for power. They have there are plenty of places you can take this online for free and see what your personal score is for, um, for, for power, for desire to influence, to desire to control. Uh, are you a more personalized or socialized uh, power leader? Hopes are most more socialized power. And, uh, we see that the research shows that the need for power is found to be positively correlated to various, um, various leadership um, efficacy or effectiveness criteria. And leaders who are relatively uninhibited in their need for power will use power impulsively, uh, which is not a good thing. Leaders with a high need for power but low activity inhibition may be successful in the short term, but they do create hazards in the long term. So harder tactics, harder tactics like coercive power, uh, punishment, um, uh, taking away positive outcomes uh, or positive uh, rewards for employees, all of these types of things, again, they'll, they'll work in the short term, but in the long term, they have serious long-term detrimental effects on the organization and on the followers. Now, some followers also have a high need for power, which can lead to tension between the follower and the leader. And it's difficult working with a subordinate who has that high desire for, um, for power, particularly when that's personal power. It can lead to a lot of uh, friction organization, and eventually you're left with no choice but to let that employee go. Okay. So individuals vary in their motivation to manage in terms of um, six composites, uh, rem and and we'll, uh, we'll actually, we're going to go through the rest of these on the next slide. 
I'm going to push a pause here. So stop the share and I'll see you. Um, I'll see you in the next actually video.